want to talk about the failure of success and the pain of I, me, me, mine. We all go through so much narcissistic calibration around this kind of thing. I have a, a clinical story I love to tell. A guy came into treatment who had um, just sold his defense contracting business for $30 million cash. And he kept using the phrase, $30 million cash. And I kept imagining, what does that look like? The wheelbarrow, the, you know. <laughs> What does $30 million cash look like? And he was kind of bereft because he had spent his entire adult life dedicated to international arms sales, and now he didn't know what to do. And I'm licking my chops, being a longtime meditator and stuff, and thinking, oh, this is going to be one of these spiritual meaning of life kinds of discussions. Not unlike what Bill, if anybody heard Bill O'Hanlon talking earlier about infusing spirituality into uh, psychotherapy. And as usual, my idea was, irrelevant to his experience, and I was, it wasn't going well. But he came in after about three sessions, and he said, uh, maybe four sessions, he said, I just saw him. He looked different. He said, what's happened? He said, I'm feeling much better. I said, yeah, it looks that way to me. Something happened? He said, I've come up with a business plan by which I think I could parlay my $30 million into a $50 million business. And if I could establish a $50 million business, I'd feel I had succeeded. And he was absolutely serious. Absolutely serious. And it was such a great teaching for me because, you know, there I was, I was a rel relatively young psychologist at the time, and I had all sorts of concerns about how well I was doing and what would be a marker of success and all the concerns about the rank in the baboon troop. And the problem is that we constantly recalibrate. Think about something that you thought once, you, uh, some stage in your life that you thought once you get there, you'll settle. You'll you'll no longer have this restlessness of wanting something else to buoy you up, et cetera. And, you know, it could be getting your degree, establishing a practice, um, getting married, having children, whatever. You know, and these things are all wonderful, but they don't work. We can, the mind continues to recalibrate. The mind continues to struggle to set up this sense of self. And let's look at anxiety. Much of our anxiety has to do with who we think we are. Narcissistic threats, you know, we, what do we worry about? We worry about our self-image. A little exercise, okay? What would you have done differently today if you had no concerns whatsoever for what the other smart monkeys thought of you? An awful lot of what we do is motivated by concerns over how, uh, over how we're seen, as well as things like our health, you know, my body. This body has to live forever. That's going to be the topic of the concurrence that I do. Uh, tomorrow, you know, our wealth, particularly since managed care, the anticipated loss of pleasure, anticipating some kind of pain, these are the things that we worry about. And a lot of it, though, is, is fundamentally defending an illusion. A lot of the defenses aren't against instinct. They're not what Freud described necessarily of um, I'm defending against my aggression or my sexuality, although that is a part of this, if you think about it, because why do we defend against our aggression or our sexuality? Because we think that shouldn't be part of me. I shouldn't have murderous rage toward my brother. You know? I shouldn't want to have sex with you know, many, many people that I meet. You know, I'm not supposed to have these different kinds of feelings. So it's really, even here, it's, it's about this constructed self that, um, that gives us trouble with instinct. But we're also just afraid to see that this is just an unfolding psychophysiological organism that's going to have a number of moments and then stop living. And that cuts us off from others, and it cuts us off from our own experience because we wind up not seeing the things that are threatening to us. The idea here is if we're going to become free, we're going to have to face all of these fears about who we think we are, as well as all of our, our fears to let go of this identification with ourselves. <laughs>